Alex Adams Show, Episode 2. We're doing this again. Unfortunately. Dark times. Dark times at the company. I hate Instagram so much. Why do you hate Instagram? I, I mean, just, I think everyone... I was just looking at Instagram. I think everyone does. I, people send me such terrible shit on Instagram. It's like, they send me memes that aren't even funny. Yeah. Like, just such cringe, man. Just such nightmare shit. Keep sending them. I, <laughs> it's good. It's in motivation. There's a plane flying over. We live under a fucking airfield. We yeah. Live, we live by the airport. We need, we need donations to not live in Motel 8 <laughs> by Fort Lauderdale International Airport. It's not, it's it's not. I like the I like the planes because it, you can look up and like, you see like somebody's make escaping somewhere, they're leaving. Like someone's up in the landing gear hiding to try and <laughs> <laughs> try and migrate somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's I think it's nice. It's like not too bad here though. There's a lot of planes, but like they don't they're not too like annoying. Yeah. When I first moved in, I, I noticed the planes after I'd been here for a month. It was t- so here, like, occasionally, and I was like, oh, shit, I bought a place under a landing under, f- under uh, airfield. The, under the flight path. Yeah, the flight path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's not bad. Most of them are, like, high. So it's it's nice. That sounds like the name of, like, a, a, a movie of some kid who comes from nothing and wins, like, some kind of weird sweepstakes and then blows it all on drugs and... RVs and side by sides, like maybe maybe a movie like Haley Joel Osment would be in. You know what I mean? Like from under the flight pad in theaters, June twenty twenty six. My shirt's disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. I just put it on. I got hair and stuff and <laughs> oh, all over gross. it. It's gross. <laughs> that shirt looks like it costs like three dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Porn up sent it to me back in COVID days. Stay home, hope. Yeah, it's important to stay home, stay safe. Still do that. Don't leave your don't leave your home. It's fucking dangerous outside. It is dangerous. It's yeah. it's awful out there. There's a lot of bad shit going on. Yeah, but I, I hate Instagram. I wanna I, years ago I had a meme, a really bad meme page for a couple years. And back then it was fun. Yeah. I got into memes like I started making memes back in like 2016. And memes were like a I don't know, they kind of blew up. Yeah. They were always around for years, but it felt fun back then. Yeah. Now meme pages are just depressing. Man. It's just the whole Instagram app is just it's sliding into Facebook. You know, it's it, yeah. You know, because well, they've made it's it way, way worse. closer to it's way closer to Instagram is way closer to Facebook than it is to like TikTok. Yeah. As far as user experience and the people using it. Oh yeah. And it's just like well, it's a dead, it's kind of like a dead platform a little bit because they've tr- they've made it way worse in that they've tried to make it into TikTok. Yeah, it, it's just not even like I told you the other day. You can't even pause the videos. Yeah, in the reels. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad, bro. Because they tried to make an app that wasn't made for like short form Zoomer, you know, ADHD zog fog content. That's not what Instagram was for. It was just for posting pictures. And, yeah. then, and then they like they slowly got into video, and it was like, okay, this is kind of cool. And then they came out with the reels thing, like solely to compete. And they came out with stories and they stole Snapchat's entire business because Snapchat's terrible and for legitimate teenagers and, and 10 year olds and shit. And then TikTok comes out and they came out with fucking reels. So uh, Jewel Pod ASMR for you guys. Please don't abuse the microphones. They're hard workers. <laughs> the, the fans want, they want, they message me. They want the Jewel Pod ASMR. Who 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 sent that? Who messaged you that? I want to know. I want I want usernames. Something. No one. <laughs> but I know what they want. That's why I'm a good I'm a good content creator because I think for the people. Yeah. I can understand what they. It's want. like, a, like I a, can read their minds. They don't know that they want that, but then I give it to them and they're like, "Oh, that's delicious. Thank you. <laughs> it's so good. It's delicious." <laughs> Never heard anyone describe content as delicious. Isn't that satisfying? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna mute your mic the entire time you're doing this shit. <laughs> Can we turn this into like a true crime podcast? Yeah, that requires so much work, though. You actually gotta like do. How are there that many true crime? Like, there's I, so I don't know, man. 
Because it's how many horrible murder? Oh, like millions. There's there's got to be like unlimited content for that. But I can't imagine like the amount of prep they have to do for that. What what if we did a true crime, pro- but we just read the Wikipedia page? We did no research. Yeah, and we just read the Wikipedia, and it's like Jim Bob Duggar disappeared on his tractor, and he's gone now. And we can also do it as like a mukbang too. Yeah, I've seen. I think a few people are doing that mukbang true crime podcasts. I'm ready for the nukes to fly in. I'm. This is. I'm ready to go. It's, this is enough. It's. I'm glad it's disgusting. that we're. This is like, because we're part of the greatest American industry now. Yeah. Being podcasters. The last, yeah, the last great American business. Yeah, this, last great American is, enterprise. Yeah, this is it. Dude, my grandfather worked in a steel mill for like 40 years. Yeah. You know, and uh, the one you know, my great grandfather for that probably built wagons or something. Uh, yeah. Uh, smuggled whiskey. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and before that, I think they were in Europe probably, but, and now it's, my dad was like, an, you know, lineman. So he's like climbing up like thousands of feet in the sky on electric poles. Hell yeah. Very high up. Yeah. Grabbing like, you know, a hundred thousand volts in his hand with a glove on and just, of course, yeah, glove and then getting safe. down and spending all his money on cocaine and hookers. He's and a, now I he's can a patriot. follow in their footsteps as a great laborer yep. doing real labor yeah. podcasting. Yeah. No, it's true. It's like you ever – there was like a quote from a, like a Saudi prince who was like, my grandfather rode a camel. I drive a Range Rover. My son will drive a Range Rover. His son will ride a camel. As in, they're going to lose all their fucking money because the oil, the oil is going to like dry up and shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's, that's like, good. you know, that's like, you know, I was a customer service person. My son is a podcaster. His son will be a podcaster. His son will be dead. <laughs> it's all going to be over. So it's like such a good, it's like such a good fucking, you know. But it's like this, this is cool because we don't prepare for this at all. Yeah, we just the most work goes into setting all this shit up the way that like our weird autistic minds like it, and then we're like, "Ooh, okay, this looks not like shit." And then we just there's no like topic preparation or any kind of notes or anything, which I like. I think to do this like those podcasts where it's like you feel like they spend like ten hours setting up for it for every one where it's like with interview questions and it's too much. And I guess because we're, you know, we're just bug people like everyone else. Well, let's hear from our sponsors. Uh, uh, we have an ad read for Raytheon, I think. Yep. Are you are you getting missile shot at you by Palestinians? Do you need help? Feel free to pick up an Iron Dome system today. Raytheon.com slash Alex Adam. We're going to get sued. <laughs> we're going to be like, take this shit down. Raytheon's gonna, we're, we're big fans of Raytheon. We love you guys. And we love how you're um, uh, uh, homo friendly now, gay friendly. <laughs> Um, as two homos ourselves. That's right. Um, Gay and proud. Oh, God. Okay, time to hear from our next sponsor. Uh, Bluechew.com. Yes, Bluechew. Do you have a ruined dicklet that needs to get hard? <laughs> Bluechew.com slash Alex Adams show. Code help. <sighs> We're never going to get any sponsors for this, dude. <laughs> I'd be so surprised. That'd be great. Could you imagine if we did? How do we? we I've gotten I've gotten like requests from like weird, like Chinese yeah. sex style companies and stuff. Yeah, I don't think you're. And I was to, like, would you be allowed to do that though on like YouTube or Spotify or app like Apple? Like, be able to say like, "Hey, everyone, are you lonely? Are you ugly? Do you have no dating or social prospects? Feel free to pick up a Mister Verse today." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if they'd let you do that. I feel like they wouldn't. Buy this pussy and asshole plus feet (laughs) plastic rubber mold. Two for one deal. Pussy asshole plus feet. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like. I bought a. I don't know if they let you get away with that. I bought a a actual like old school inflatable sex doll one time. Did you really? Yeah. And this was like, I was in the industry. I mean, this was like maybe like five years ago. I was visiting my parents up north. Um, I was home for a couple of weeks and, um, I just thought I'd go back to the porn store and, um, it was like a mile down the road from my parents' house Yeah, that I used to frequent okay. when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, have fun with some of the gentlemen there. Of course. And then, you know, I would buy whippets 
and sit and crack them. They'd sell crackers and balloons and you'd do the, the nitrous. I would do it in my, in my car and I had to hallucinate, um, listen to like techno and, and stuff. What's a cracker? Uh, you just cracked it open and you... You're sitting right in front of me is what that is. It's a, um, <laughs> they're about this big, but like a, a nitrous, like when you buy like the portable nitrous, they'll sell them like a, a 10 pack, 24 pack. Yeah. And they're like, like little CO2 kind of cartridge looking. Oh, things. so you crack it open. But and yeah, you... this is just a little metal thing that screws together. Uh-huh. You put the cartridge in it in the top, and put it... a balloon on one end and you, you like twist it. And then the, it cracks the top of the nitrous and it goes into the balloon. And then you, and then you yeah. And you get, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get, you get good in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay. <laughs> you just stared off into the fucking abyss, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one time, one of the last times I did nitro, because I used to do it all the time, like a fiend. Like a, I mean. You're a big nitrous guy. Yeah, yeah. When I was like 18, 19, I really got into it. Yeah. They call it, some people call it hippie crack. Okay. Because it just like, because it only lasts for like, you know, 30 seconds, a minute or so. But it just, it makes you feel real good. Yeah. And I don't think it's bad for you at all, from what I've, my research. Okay. But it probably it not, isn't great. Sounds like it's fucking terrible the, for you. I, nitrous is, you gotta, um, it's really cold. It's like freezing cold. Okay. So you, you need to not do it instantly. But I would instantly do it. So you're breathing in like ice cold nitrous oxide. But okay. it feels refreshing, you know? No, I don't, but I'll, I'll take your word. I'll take your word for You've it. You've never done anything with your life. No, I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to do that stuff. No, I've never, I mean, I've, no, I've like smoked weed and like taken pill, pills, but like not like anything like, not anything that was not like, I haven't done any industrial substances. Like nitrous is an industrial substance and I've never done anything like that. Last time, just a little, <laughs> they want it. They need it. <laughs> but yeah, the one time, one of the last times I did it, I hadn't done any for a while, nitrous for a while. And then I bought like, just like a 10 pack, just a little, yeah. little, I was, I was working at Radio Shack. I think it was 19 working at Radio Shack. Um, and I got off work. I think I was, li- I was living in this halfway house at the time and I was trying to maybe not do drugs, but most of the time I was doing drugs while I was living there. I wasn't supposed to be. Yeah. But nitrous is great because you can't like test for it. So it's like a freebie. It doesn't count as a relapse. You know, that's fine. But I was like, let me swing by the, the, the old stomping ground porn store and uh, buy a little pack. And it was like, it, it just got dark, I think. And like, I used to do them back then, like, because you can buy, they sell big balloons. So I'd have to do like two at a time to really get a good hit. Yeah. Like two cartridges at a time. Yeah. You do one and like, you put the, I can't remember, but I'd, I'd do a double hitter. I'd do a double hitter. The, yeah. Yeah. Double Benjamin. Yeah, you, you twist the balloon, and then you put pop the one out, and you pop it, the other one in, and then you fucking... Holy fuck. So you got this big balloon. This is so involved. Just sitting in a Dodge, like an old Dodge Neon that I had. Based. But I had, like... It was just, like... Because, like, for me, man, it makes me totally hallucinate. Like, you feel good at first, and then things, like, get pixelated, and then it's... Like, I would just, I'd be gone, another universe, for like 10, 15 seconds or something. Yeah. But this time I did it, it was like, I immediately saw, I think the first thing, the first two I did, spiders fell in my lap okay. everywhere. Real spiders or? Yeah, at the time, yeah, they were real. Okay. But then they weren't. <laughs> it's quick. Giant spiders, like, it's b- bigger than my hand, just all over me. And I'm freaking out. <laughs> then I come down, and I'm like. In the, in the Dodge Neon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Parked in the back of the porn store. Nice. You know, in, in Maryland, and there's a fence. There's a mobile home park behind the fence. Okay. Um, and I'm listening to some weird, like, uh, you know, indie hyper pop, sad boy. Okay. Um, kind of good music. Shit that you come illegal. down. Yeah. And then I'm like, whoa, that was not good. So I do another two. Got my other balloon ready. <laughs> Number two. Let's try this again. Run it back. And then... I get a knock on my windshield and I look and there's a guy, he's got this piece of paper that says written on it. He's like yelling at me. He's like, Hey, did you see this? I got my windshield up, my, my the windows up. And it says the end of the world, whatever day's date this was. And like, you know, um, 2000, 
seven or some shit. This was a long, long time. I'm an old man now. Yeah. But it was like the, the world's ending. Uh, Jesus saves. Repent now. Okay. And I was like, fuck, is this real? And he's like, yeah, it's real. He's like, yeah. He's like, look at this. The world is. And then like the car shifts up. The ground breaks away. And like there's just a pit of like lava, like straight down. And I'm like, the, uh, my car's about to fall in the lava. And I come down. I realized that was a hallucin- hallucination. I was like, wow, that was bad. That That's, was a bad one. That sounds like a Michael Bay movie. Yeah. So now I was like, change the music. Let's try it again. <laughs> you, you keep having these awful, awful trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you immediately come out of it and you're like, let's run it back. I think it'd be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's a fucking dress rehearsal. And then, um, so I did another one. I was like, it's fine. I had to reset my mindset, grind set, just come, you know, relax. So everything's fine. Because usually, no, this is like the first time I've ever had like trips like that bad. Like, yeah. I've had one, I remember one time it was like, I saw like a big fat naked man floating on top of me. Okay. And he was like yelling at me or something. Were you excited? I, a little, little bit. And okay. then, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that, you know, it wasn't really that scary. This was like horrifically nightmare. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And I did a third one and like, that one wasn't that bad. I just saw like all these faces and like echoes everywhere. Just like, um, like, like the, the drama comedy mask face kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Seen, like in like a theater. Or yeah, something. I got them on my elbow. Yeah. 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 The happy and the sad yeah, face. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, yeah. they were just like, I, and I was in like complete blackness and they were like popping in front of me and like, and that was scary, but I was like, that was, that was better. That's fine. And then I did like a fourth double header and, uh, a grid of lasers, Fuck. like red lasers started coming through my car, like cutting it, like a whole bunch of like towards me. <laughs> I jumped out of the car and there was like a, like a green pickup truck parked kind of next to me, which there, the guy was inside, like trying to suck somebody's dick or something probably. Cause that's what like a lot of people use the bookstore for. They have like booths in the back and then no. guys hang out and they try to blow each other, or jerk off watching porn. Um, it's cool. It's You're a, kidding. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, but I was being a good, I don't do any of that degenerate stuff that, that day I was just trying to do my nitrous, but I, the lasers were coming. I jumped out and of my car and got underneath this other guy's truck. You got underneath his truck, underneath his truck to, so to get away from the lasers. And then I realized like, okay, I'm good. And then I was like, I'm underneath somebody's truck uh-huh. because I thought lasers were going to come slice me up. Yeah. So then I took, there was like a few, like, you know, cartridges left. I didn't throw them away. I put them in the trunk and I said, all right, we're going to pause this for tonight. We're this gonna, is enough. We're going to pause this experiment. That was not the last time I did nitrous. But how? I did it, I did it again when I was driving, I think uh, a couple weeks later. <laughs> but how? It was a really bad idea. Yeah, that sounds like it, you upped the ante and made it way worse. Yeah. But how long did that? High whole- stakes. <laughs> How long did that whole thing take? Like, how long is each trip? And then, oh, that whole process, all those was like that was maybe in the course of like fifteen minutes. No, nah, not even like eight minutes, probably. <laughs> Gee, bro, that'll be like an hour. Or something. No, no. Eight minutes. Yeah. So you just, uh, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like, fuck. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> just immediately run it right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, at least it's not a big time sink. You know what I mean? At least it only, you get it done pretty quick. You know what I mean? I mean, how much is that? How much was that shit back? Like, how much did it cost? Like, 25 bucks for, like, I think it was, like, 20 or 30 bucks for, like, a 24-pack or something. That's not bad. It's pretty reasonable. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of people look down on that because it's, it's a very fast thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's not like doing, like, acid or mushrooms and tripping for five hours or, or more. Yeah, that seems like. Very time consuming now. But it's not, you know, it's much less commitment, you know. Yeah. You, you freak out, you you think the world universe is ending. Yeah. It's a minute two minutes later, you're, you're done. Time to go to work. Go back to the halfway house. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But yeah, that's the adult bookstore. But then, you know, years later, this is probably five years ago. I, you know, I'm back visiting my parents and I venture back to the bookstore, mm-hmm. my old stomping grounds. Now I'm, you know, in recovery. Don't do drugs or drink anymore. Yeah. Sadly. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. But I was, I was walking around the aisles kind of just being like, hmm, let's just see what's going on here. 
and uh, I see a blow up doll. Okay. A little blonde, like an actual inflatable, real blow up doll. Ooh. They cost like fifty bucks or something. Jesus. And I was like, let me, let me try one of them. So I bought one. Uh-huh. I took it home back to my parents' house. Yep. And I fucked it. Was it good? No, it was weird. Was it, it was? It was. It, it had like plastic. You know, lit. I mean, it was like a. It was like fucking a pool toy. Yeah, well, I was going to say. Which there were some did, weirdos that are like kind of into that kind of. Did it have that like consistency of a pool toy? Like oh, yeah. Like floaty yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But then it had like a rubbery vagina insert thing. That sounds horrific. And butthole. And then I, I cummed in it. And then I immediately threw it in the closet. Because I felt a sense of deep shame. You should have. That's good. That's how you know you're. You still got a shred of fucking humanity left <laughs> as you immediately feel shame for doing something heinous like that. Yeah. Yeah, it felt really. And then um, I was like, I throw that away. And then, but then I fucked it again, like uh, like four hours later or something. <laughs> the shame didn't last very long, did it? <laughs> a short, it had a short half on it. <laughs> I was like, let me pull that back and run it. <laughs> let me try one more time. And was it any better the second time? No. It was. Did you clean it out in between use? Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alex Adams. Who do you think you're dealing with here? I'm a real pro. You think it's my first rodeo? <laughs> Oh, God. Um, but then I think that um, I think I threw it out. I hope that I threw it out after that. I hope my mom didn't have to find that and throw it out. I hope she did. <laughs> your mom's <laughs> such a nice. Your mom's such a nice lady. I hope she found her son's disgusting fuck pool toy in the closet. That she's like, well, you know, he's just different. and like and then to imagine like my mom finding that and it's like my son's a, a porn star and he. He, he he's a he owns a hundred thousand dollar Audi and he's oh you bought that when you were doing, oh yeah no I thought this was like when you were no, like this a, was like five years ago oh gee yeah, I didn't want to know that I thought this is when you were like no a this was no like ten years ago or no something. no no <laughs> you were actively <laughs> yeah. having sex with women as your job yeah and you thought yeah hmm, let me <laughs> yeah I was like let me just you know. <laughs> that makes it so much better yeah. that makes that whole story way better is the fact that you were. An active, an active porn sex worker person, and you were up and you know up visiting your parents, and you're like, hmm, I wonder what this feels like. Yeah, probably better than the real thing. Let's try. And you're like, did you blow it up with your mouth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro. There's so many levels of sadness to that. There's so many <laughs> levels of just depravity <laughs> to going through that. It's it, it's good. I like that. Yeah. It's it's disgusting. So, you know, this episode is probably going to be called The Industrial Revolution and Its Consequences. As it should be. Um, and I don't know. You be the judge. I, Ted right, Ted wrong. That sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> you know, none of that stuff would have happened, that whole story, if uh, if it wasn't for the Industrial Revolution. You know, so yeah. you know, let me know. It's You be the you be the judge. Were we better off when I – what? see, because it – if we would just be a farming society still, I would have just, that story would have been, I traveled two weeks uh-huh. to my parents' farm, farmstead, homestead, yep. to help them with the, with the, you know, plowing, with the harvest. Yeah. And then I fucked a horse behind the barn yep. and then killed the horse. But yeah. So what? And then you would have cut your finger on the shovel, burying the horse, and you would have died of an infection. Yeah. So... And then in that scenario, that's probably about, you know, it's, so, industrial revolution, no industrial revolution. Bestiality, it's, blow up doll. What's better or worse? You guys decide. We'll let the viewer decide. <laughs> what a fucking horror show. You gotta drink your, drink more of your great right. value Walmart water. I love it. It's, it's drinking water. Yeah. Walmart drinking water. I like how they might, do you think they sell other water in bottles that you can't drink? <laughs> Maybe. Like dirty piss water? God, only the best. Shit. Only- <laughs> Jesus Christ! Only the best for you. Thank you, sir. Very good. Very good uh, employee treatment here at uh, Alex Adams. I'm gonna get water all over the soundboard and electrocute myself. And you're gonna break the soundboard. It's just gonna be even worse. <laughs> that's what I. Yeah, that's kind of the. Yeah, I hope the soundboard doesn't break. I've grown fond of it. But yeah, I've never bought any sex toys. I never could even imagine spending money on something so foolish. You know, I just, I just, because it's like, 
I never wanted a sex doll. It seems like so much work. And like a good one is expensive. And what is even a good one? You know what I mean? It's like, thank you. Man, you're killing it with the ASMR noises today. <laughs> I, heard, I heard that fucking, uh, I heard that. That was like the wind in my fucking sails. Thank you for that. Filthy beer is getting all over them. Yeah, I see that. But like, I just never, because they have like, the, you see the, you see like the ads on like, you know, the internet for like the auto blow too, like the thing that like strokes and, and <laughs> mutilates your penis when you put it in there. That looks cool. That looks like a medieval torture device. That looks like <laughs> something in, that they use like in Blade Runner 2078 or whatever the fuck it was when you don't want to confess to like trying to start a rebellion and they're like, I right, were bringing it in. And the guy's like, nothing's going to break me. And they bring that in and the guy's just like, I'll tell you whatever you want to know, whatever you want to know. So it's like, you know, I never understood like the whole sex toy thing. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I got two sex toys right here. Larry and Curly. I'm Mo. I got four. That's Can you see the grippers? <laughs> Can you guys see the grippers? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But yeah, no, I just never thought to, but you're a more curious individual than I am. Yeah. So you're like, you know, <laughs> imme- immediately open to yeah. new horrific experiences. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was, I was talking to, um, I was talking to Alex the other day. Yeah. And he was, uh, he, he was, he was telling me he was a, a, a perfect girlfriend fan. Okay. He didn't know I made that. Oh, really? We were talking. Yeah. It was a mutual friend of ours, also named Alex. Um, young man. He's a good man. He's a good, uh, 14. He's a good, no, he's 20. He's 21. He's a good man. He's an adult. Yeah. But I've started recently hanging out with this guy and, um, really funny guy. Um, but he was telling me about, you know, pornography and having a girlfriend and, and we were talking about different stuff. And he was saying like, that he thought that there was times where he really worried that he was like a coomer in a, in a bad way. Yeah. He was, t- he was telling me like, he seriously thought about buying like a legit sex doll. Like a ten thousand dollar, like real doll, like the real deal. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, no, dude, that's normal. I was like 18, 17, like thinking about like how do I these are like eight thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars. Like, how do I I don't have any money? Like, how do I get one of these? But see, the biggest problem with those, that stuff is like, where do you keep that? Yeah. Especially if you like live with your parents and like yeah. or even you're trying to have any kind of semblance of like any kind of normal life. It might have a girlfriend or friends yeah. over. You don't want somebody finding like a giant life size. Or you go on a Tinder date, you bring the girl back, and this, the doll's already in your bed, and you're like, hey, this is my friend. This is a good friend of mine. This is Emily. <laughs> this is Emily. She's a real sweetheart. She's, I think you're going to love her. And then you lock the door behind you. And then it's you, the girl, and Emily. And you have your first threesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds fun. But anyway, he was telling you about it. He was worried about being a rabbit. Yeah, 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 And I just told him, like, no, that's totally fine and normal. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I was like, keep watching the videos. Keep make, giving me views. Yeah, make sure, you're, make sure you're signed up for the site. Make sure you swipe that credit card. <laughs> Go ahead and enter that little, that little page. Yeah, I just, yeah, because it's like the storage thing is, is, is annoying too. You know what I mean? It's like I ate $20 worth of Chick-fil-A before this, and I'm, I'm fighting a battle here. You gotta think about like cleaning it and stuff. Yeah, it's just gr- it's bro. When I had to I had to clean out Mister Verse, that was gr- you didn't even you didn't even nut inside that thing and it was gross. It just the texture of that is disg- It feels alien like. It doesn't feel human. You know what I mean? Like, and that it felt like I was cleaning like ET's ass. Kinda. I think it, I think it felt good. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, no, they do feel kind of. Yeah, weird. I just I mean maybe it feels kind of good. I don't know. It's something different, something to mix it up. Shout out to the to the content creators out there, like on the hub and stuff, who like legit just bang, you know, sex dolls, and some of them probably making five, ten, twenty k a month. Shout out to our the most like ascended, elevated. Yeah, you know. Shout out to our silicone kings. Yeah, thank you for your service. We appreciate it. Not paying for nothing, not having to deal with real life people, and situation literally just in a dark room with a, a piece of chinese made yeah chinese made sex wear yeah and it's not i'm not it's not that i'm jealous of them but god damn it if i don't respect them yeah for what they're able to accomplish. i'm incredibly jealous i'm just gonna come out and say it i am 
fucking seething right now. Well, yeah, because if you were doing that, making 15k a month, you'd have a, a GT4. Yeah, PDK. PDK GT4 and a Genesis, and we'd be good. I'd be good to go, man. I'd be living. I'd be living real good. Yeah, tell the viewers what we're gonna do tomorrow. So tomorrow we're going to test drive a Gen Genesis GV70. The three, it's the 3.5 turbo, all right? It's, it's, like, it's like the thing that like Tiger Woods flipped over and almost killed himself in when he was yeah. high on pills a couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Tiger's a good man. Come on. He's one of the best call. He's one of the best golfers ever. That's true. And he had a brand deal with them. At least he got paid to almost lose his leg. <sighs> you know? Because the, the, rea the reality is, man, is we probably pull up there, we go to test drive it, and they're like, are you kidding me? This is a Genesis. We're not even going to let you see the car. You just do the paperwork and you buy it. Yeah. And then you're going to scream. Because it's true Korean luxury. Yeah. And then you're going to scream and you're going to, because you have a little bit of money and you're going to be like, look at my watch. Yeah. I forgot to wear my watch. Dude, again, you got to, man, Jesus Christ, dude. People don't know I have any money now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but they're going to, you know, they're not going to let us test drive it. And then we're going to get upset. And we're going to be like, we came here in an AMG that we were willing to give you for this lovely Korean pod car. Now, Nick has a, um, 2021 C63S AMG. Gore, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Very nice car. Tell the viewers why you would like to trade that in for a Genesis GV70 3.5D. Yeah, tell them D. the level of mental. Tell, tell, tell the viewers why, because most people would think that seems like a nightmarishly bad idea. It is. No, it's, it's a terrible idea, and I will regret it. And probably on the next podcast, we'll talk about how I regret it. Uh, but the main thing is I, I had an X3 M40i, fake M SUV, and it was, it was great. It was really fast. It drove great. It actually looked pretty good, but it just didn't feel, I felt, I felt like a cuck in that car. And it's, it's fine to, to be a cuck. It's not cool to look like one, right? So, and it was hit. Yeah. And I, I didn't it have it. It wasn't on the car fast. It's yeah, just a secret biggest, accident. Yeah. Repainted. Yeah. Shout out BMW. Body worked. Shout out BMW Delray Beach for selling me a hit 15,000 mile X3. Yeah, M3 guys, I. if you can avoid it, man. I mean, we're both scaven, raving, foaming at the mouth car enthusiast people. But, <laughs> and we're not going to change. No. Unfortunately, it's never probably never going to change for us. Never going to get better. But if you can avoid ever getting into like cars, Try to try to avoid that. Get into gardening. Yeah. Get into fucking gardening or like Funko Pops. Fun Funkos are fucking cool. Building like two, three thousand piece puzzles. Legos. Legos are dope. Yeah. Because it, it is the most expensive, uh, just ridiculous, stupid hobby. It is. It is awful. It should be illegal. But it's you know you shouldn't be allowed. Once to... you get into it, it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a nightmare. Yeah. You... It's a constant series of nightmare. You shouldn't be allowed to have more than one car. <laughs> And then you have to keep that car for at least 10 years. That yeah. should be the, the, the law. But anyway, you know, I had the X3M40i. You drove it. You liked it. It, was, it drove. It, did, it was way better than I expected. Yeah, it drove really good. But it had the hit on it, and it just didn't look cool enough for me. And then, you know, I start working for you. You drive a cool car, and I'm like, hey, what if, what if I drive a cool car? What if I can do that too? And what if you help me get a cool car? What if I get a company AMG? And you're like, well, I think we could, I think we could do something about that. And I immediately was like, ooh, okay. And the thing is, like, the AMG is really good, right? Except it's not. <laughs> Except the transmission in that car, it, it's the only problem with it. Because like, like, yeah, the back kicks out because it's got 500 horsepower and it's twin turbo V8 and it's a uh, driver's car. It's yeah, exciting. Yeah. It's literally <laughs> supposed to like that. It's literally a, it's You're supposed to like almost crashing the car. It's literally a German Mustang, <laughs> but it's like really, cause like if I put Michelin's on it, it'd be fine. Cause it has Pirelli's on it right now. And if you guys don't know, Pirelli's are the worst, worst tires on the planet. If you see them on a car, don't buy the car. I'm, I sent you that TikTok of like that Michelin, like PS4S, yeah. like fan page on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> about memes Bro. about how good Michelin PS4s Bro, are. Bro, because they're just they're just the best tires. Yeah, it's like even because yeah, I have those on the on the uh, on the you know GT4. And it's a rear wheel drive car with like 450 horsepower. Now it is a Porsche, so it's already got good engineering it's compared to like almost the shit an AMG does. Yeah. I said as an AMG owner, yes, I love you got G63. My G63, it's great, and but it <laughs> but Porsche just is better with how they make their cars. Yeah, it's way but better. Like when I put. You know, the Michelin's on there. It's so much like in the it can just be pouring rain and I can actually like drive the car kind of fast, like kind of drive it normal. Yeah. And not even it's a real wheel drive. I shouldn't be able to do that. 
Yeah. If I did that in the McLaren, I would immediately die. Yeah. And kill like 10 people. <laughs> if it's even if it's even drizzling in the McLaren, your life's yeah. at risk. Yeah, but you'd rather drive like 25 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, we've done, it, but we've done it before on the highway. But it's like, even if I put Michelins on that car, which would make it way better, it doesn't fix the fact that that transmission feels like an Inventador. Yeah. And not in a good way. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... But see, the thing is with Aventadors too, and the, the transmissions in, in, you know, in Lamborghini Aventadors are, are terrible, nightmare, night, night, nightmarishly bad. But if you just floor the car, it's not that bad. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So if you just immediately, every time you drive it, or just like, you know, pedal to the, to the floor, flooring yeah. it, it's fine. So just, you just got to do that. The same thing in the It's in a C-Class. I drive a C-Class. It's a fucking C-Class. <laughs> It should not see that's a th- I still I still feel though because I because I test drove it first when we bought it a few months ago and he drove it. Yeah. And I could tell that the first to second was kind of a little clunky. But I felt like it was just if you modulate it a little bit, not necessarily flooring it, you can get it to where it's not that bad. You you can. I just feel like that there's some like kind of trick way you can drive it a little bit. Yeah, there is. And I know how to do it. But it's like it's it just so, makes you mad to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's so yeah. irritating. You shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, I shouldn't have to because the transmission in the in the G wagon is perfect. Well, but see, but I told you, like in my in, in my G wagon, it's like in the sport the sport plus mode, it can be a little a little clunky here and there, but it's not. It's maybe like five percent of the time, ten percent. It's like not enough to where it bothers me because most of the time it's really good. Yeah, and, and the mid range, the way it auto shifts, auto downshifts, and stuff is better than. Audis I bought like it's it's mostly really good. Yeah, see my thing is even in comfort this car is like glunk. <laughs> yeah, see like the G wagon in comfort is like it's good. You know, well why don't you you know why don't you we well, you know just buy a car that's like two three hundred thousand dollars. It's a good car. Why don't you do that? I never thought about that. Thank you so much. <laughs> holy <laughs> holy fucking shit, ladies and gentlemen, you've just seen a. Why break- don't you make a little bit of money and try to be successful? You've just seen a breakthrough on the Alex Adams show. No, the real key is just to buy a BMW because they yeah. drive See, better. that's the thing. BMWs. They drive better than drive any, better than, than anything. Audis yeah. or the only things that drive better than BMWs are Porsches. Yeah. So, it's you know, it's like. And to be a Porsche owner, you need to be a multimillionaire. Yeah. No, that's just, you need to actually, make, actually make accurate. You need to be, you need to be a dentist, a well-established <laughs> yeah. dentist yeah, yeah, yeah. with multiple practices. Yeah. Probably living. Or the most viewed porn star, male porn star in the And world. he has one of the cheaper Porsches. You got one of the yeah. cheaper Porsches, too. Yeah, that's all I can afford. Brokey. Yeah. Brokey. <laughs> yeah. Don't even have a 911. Couldn't even get the, like, the flagship model. You had yeah, to get no. the, little, the little baby I'm car. aspiring to get all right, good. You a keep, GT, the 911 GT3. You keep working. But yeah, I got to keep, yeah. You got to keep, you know. I got to keep grinding. Keep grinding. You keep making the podcast every week. Yeah. Maybe we'll get you, maybe we'll get you 911. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, but it's like, that's the, that's the thing, dude, is like it's just a transmission in that car that's fucking brutal. And it's like you can't fix that. It's like there's nothing – like what, am I going to detune it so it sucks more? Because the thing is like it takes forever for it to warm up. Yeah. See, what I hate, man, too, is that – well, the McLaren's like that, too, I've noticed. Like if I, if I sit in the McLaren before for a good like five minutes or – not even, maybe like three minutes, five minutes maybe before I like leave, it's – the transmission's – way smoother just because like yeah. one to two in the mclaren one two three if you like start it you know if you immediately start the mclaren yeah cold start we're talking been sitting there four days <laughs> cold start immediately reverse back out <laughs> rip off which all the a... tiktok like yeah car enthusiasts would like put me in jail for yeah don't let the car warm up at all just start rip it immediately <laughs> metal on metal it, like the first couple minutes you're driving it like does not drive good <laughs> it's like the car's like, hey, of course broken. Yeah, the car. But then it, it's fine after a couple minutes. It's like, oh, it shifts good now. Yeah. But if you just give it like three minutes before you leave, it's like it's already good to go. Yeah. And it's fine. Well, because that's what I do is I'll you know I you know hit the button, start the car, and I'll sit there for like a minute or two, probably ordering Chick Fil A or Chipotle or whatever bullshit on the just phone. Tell the viewers how you. What do you use this vehicle for? I use this vehicle to go to Chick Fil A, Chipotle, and to come to. To come to Alex Adams' house to how far away do I, do you live from me? Oh, like fifteen minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and to and to go on very depressing drives late at night. Okay, when I'm sad and I'm crying in the car. Yeah. So, which having a you know an AMG, an actual enthusiast vehicle, yeah. this would be good for probably. It, it is, yeah. Because that's the thing is like if I go out at one in the morning and I'm ripping it around, it's fun and it's in like track mode 
and I'm breaking out, you know, I'm doing, I'm felony speeding or whatever. It's like, it's like fun, but it's like, if I'm just going to Chick-fil-A at 1130 in the morning and I'm just, <laughs> just a, a, every, every stoplight, it's just. <laughs> you don't it, enjoy that? You don't like that? No. You like re- that? Do you like that? I mean, like, really, the only the thing that probably stops me from getting that Genesis is it's it's, pro- it's probably not going to drive as good as I think it is, of course. And then I'm just going to look at the AMG and be like, "Why the fuck are we doing this? What kind yeah, of fucking? See, that's the thing, man. It's like sick it, fucking thing. It is sounds this? amazing. It's fast. It looks it looks beautiful. Yeah. Um, thing is, man, it's like once you start, uh, it's just. You get your Most fucked. cars are bad. It's hard to find. It's yeah. hard to find like a really true combination of like stuff that's usable and comfortable, sounds good, and drives good. Transmission works decently. Yeah. It's like, and the more cars you experience, the more you get shot out to where, you know, maybe a few years ago, you wouldn't even notice certain things. And then like for me, it's like now I get in certain cars to test them out. And I'm like, oh, well, I, can't, I could not deal with this. <laughs> and where the average person, even the average like, millionaire person that doesn't isn't a car addict would be like, "This is great, I love this car," and they have it for a few years. And they get another, they don't even notice the shit that I'd be like, "I, I can't deal with this." Yeah, because it's the same. Like that's why I wanted to get the X3M because like I know the transmission and that is good. It looks pretty good. It sounds good. But it's like, dude, if it rides just as harsh as the AMG, I'm like, you should have just kept the AMG, you idiot. Yeah, because it looks be- the AMG looks better than that car. Yeah, it's gonna hold and value. the flex, the flex, yeah, the flex, values. yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like. Really, the biggest thing stopping me from getting the Genesis is one, it's a Genesis, and two, the fact that it's you haven't been successful enough yet to, to be able to uh, buy a Genesis. Yeah, exactly. You I don't, I don't want, achieve that level of status. I don't. I don't wealth. deserve the fake the fake Bentley wings. You know no. what I mean? Yeah. I don't deserve. I don't deserve that. <laughs> but it's like because I'm gonna be like, why? Like I don't drive that much. You know what I mean? It's like who who gives a shit? Just keep this car until you can get a 911 or. A fucking Macan GTS, which is disgusting. It's great. It's heinous pod pod car, but it yeah, dri- but they drive great. It did drive really good. So it's like you know, and then even like the, the RSQ8, it's like I don't want to own an Audi. I don't want to be associated I'm gonna, with I'm gonna, Audi. I'm going to buy him a RSQ8 because I don't like Audis anymore. I've owned five Audis, and now I've <laughs> I have such a hatred for the brand yeah. from experiencing better cars. And I. <sighs> But there's some Audis I think are, are still kind of cool, but mostly I'm, I'm, I'm mad at Audi. And then the last few times I've, we've been to an Audi dealership, been a they don't nightmare. want to give you a test drive. They act like you need to make $100 million a year to like look at a fucking S5. Yeah. There's just that was great, bro. Such a terrible, like BMW dealerships, experience is so much better. Yeah, 100%. Even though our, all car dealers are criminal scum demons. Yes. That should be locked up. Correct. If not executed. Correct. For their cr- heinous crimes against humanity. Yes. They commit on a daily basis. Yes. They steal from children and families every <laughs> yeah. single day. Yeah. They actively work to sabotage people's lives. Yeah. But Audi's the most heinous offender. <laughs> yeah. To me. Yeah. Every Audi deal we've been to, it's been, we've been to like two or three. It's yeah. Been bad it's, every, it's been bad every time. Yeah. Like when they were, when you went to go test drive that like three year old S5 with like 40,000 miles on it, and they're like, yeah, sir, we're going to need to do some paperwork before you do test drive. We need to agree to some numbers. I, I almost shitted myself right there. <laughs> I almost shitted myself right there in the Audi dealer because I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. You don't think we got lots of people coming in here every day trying to drive the performance vehicles? Trying to drive it's like, this. Bro, it's an S5. 350 horsepower, 8,000 pound Audi. You don't think this is attractive to a lot of people, son? <laughs> Look at it. And you vomit. Yes, it's like. I don't know, man. We'll go tomorrow or not, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll fucking see. At least it's close. But see, like, and, and, but I, I owned a new, you know, like a 2021 RS7 because um, I, old, I owned an older Gen one too, and I had a lot of love for the first one I got. So I got the new one, and I wanted to love it, but it's just the way the transmission was tuned, and it just really wasn't that as comfortable as it should have been. <sighs> I just could I just the driving experience was not like really enjoyable to me. Yeah. So a lot of some of these car companies, Audi's really guilty of it on a lot of their models, their high performance models, is it's like it's made to go 35 miles an hour and be in like 18, like 12th gear, whatever their highest, <laughs> like it immediately kicks down to like 11th gear <laughs> when you're going like 33 miles an hour. Yeah. 
or it's meant to just be flooring it, racing a BMW in the middle of the night. Doing and probably losing. At yeah, this point. doing 140. Yeah. It's yeah. like there's no in between. And like a lot of, there's a lot of these car manufacturers are guilty of this where it's like they make it to where it drives pretty cool when you're flooring it and okay when you're going like 40 miles an hour. And that's it. And in between it's like sucks. Yeah. Where it's like in between is what everybody wants to drive in. Yeah, it's the fun. I want to be going 50 miles an hour, chilling, then immediately be like, I have to swerve in front of this minivan. I, I want it to drop down four gears. <laughs> then I want to get off the pedal. I want to go fast for six seconds. Yeah. Then I want it to upshift. I want it to know what it, I want it to read my mind. And the only cars that really do that are like Porsches. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. You know what I mean? Like Porsche's PDK is the closest kind of thing to an auto. Because even the McLaren, the, the 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 transmission in the McLaren, using the paddles is a, is brilliant. Most of, almost all the time, it's instant. It's very it's crisp. It feels good. Yeah. The auto in the McLaren, auto in the McLaren and the Lambo, dog shit. And those both dual clutches, but it doesn't know what you want to do. Yeah. It up it upshifts violently, fa- like seventh gear or autistically low. Yeah. It's just I'm at, but it's a supercar, so I'm fine with that. It's acceptable. It's fine. Yeah. But you got a sedan, a family sedan. Yeah. You want it to be able to like fucking. Well, it's the, yeah. Cause I mean, even with the AMG and with the paddles, it's good. It's a dual clutch. It's, it's super quick. Yeah. But it's like, they just didn't. Any of the viewers out there that aren't in the cars and they're like, like, just, just be grateful. You're, I'm you're, saying. you're the chosen people. We're, you're we're blessed. telling you to avoid all these nightmares. Yeah, you're... And I really hate, I really hate besides Audi, even more than Audi is the car journalists. Because they're fucking liars. Yeah. They get a fucking two hundred thousand dollar car and they're like, "Oh, geez, this is great." Yeah. Well, steering feels a little isn't great, but you know what? Well, overall, I love this car. And it's like, talk about how the car really is. Use your fucking brain. Well, they can't be like because they get given most the car of the time. They don't the- ever. You don't hear a lot of this like little shit brought up, which is like the people who are actually interested in these cars would like to know. Yeah. Because they're just like fucking well, like. Well, that's why, like, guys like Throttle House are so good. I hate like, car dealers. I hate car journalists. I hate car salesmen. I hate myself. There you go. I hate cars. Same. <laughs> <laughs> All, I, I feel the I same hate way. I've done this to myself. <laughs> I hate the decisions I've made. I hate who I am. <laughs> I love the Lord, though, and I, I pray that he will deliver me from this he, horrible he automotive won't. addiction. He won't. He won't. You're fucked. We're both fucked. But no, yeah, I mean, because... That's the thing, dude, is, like, I, I've never really seen, like, any, like, car magazines say anything, like, explicitly bad about any of these cars. And that's why guys like Throttle House or, like, the, the Savage Geese are cool. Yeah, like, and, we, not, and that's the thing is, like, we love, like, Savage Geese and Throttle House are top two. And we like Doug DeMuro, but I, I don't really watch this shit like I used to. Doug yeah. is responsible for really getting me into cars. Doug is a war criminal. Like, six, seven years Doug ago. Doug has cost you, you millions know, millions of dollars. and chicken tacos. In my house, making like you know, I'm making like 30k a month, and I'm like watching Doug DeMuro videos. I'm like, oh, Lamborghini Huracan Performante. Doug says this is the new one, and then I'm like, I'm gonna buy one of those. <laughs> it, yeah, because he really makes it inviting for people that don't know anything about cars, which I was blessed to not until yeah. you know, like six, seven years ago. Yeah, and immediately just went off the deep end and ruined, tried to ruin my life. And you borderline did. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're now we're five years later and we have five cars. Yeah, but thankfully, like most of all the cars that I have, like are I like a lot most of the time. Yeah, but it's always a battle between like I was at the gas. I went to the gas station after the gym before I, I got back home, and it I thought I'd curb the fucking wraith again. Jesus Christ! I, we we were going to do a podcast the other day with uh you know with our friend John, and uh, we go to the park, and I thought, thought I curbed the wheel. Luckily, I didn't. Thank God. It's just a tire rubbed on it. And same thing today was just a tire. But there I am, you know, pumping gas in the Wraith, just looking at the, just looking at the, <laughs> at the, one of the rear tires being like, please, Jesus, don't let me see anything. Don't let me see a scrape. And I didn't thank Christ, but it's, you know, yeah. it's a, <laughs> it's a constant struggle with you, you know? Yeah. Lambo's going to be in the shop for another week. Is that what they said? Yeah. It's, um, cause I got a, a warning light on my Lambo. The other like a couple weeks ago, saying the transmission transmission issue, transmission issue. It felt normal, but it's something with the reverse is not working. So they have to order a part. Really? So probably another week it'll be ready to go. There you go. Takes a while to get it from the Volkswagen factory, yeah. from the Audi Volkswagen plant. Yeah. 
Honestly, thank God, bro. If it was an Aventador, it would have been a shot for six months. Yeah, Aventadors are, like, way worse with while, reliability. While, while, while some little Italian man tinkers well, away. Because they're built off, them. like, 1990s technology. Yeah, because <laughs> Lambo doesn't give a shit. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, at least you'll get it back next week. You know, whatever. You got two. You got four other cars. And that's See, if the Industrial fine. Revolution ever happened, we'd just have a horse. Yeah. And be like, I don't like this horse. And then you shoot it in the head. <laughs> Kill the fucking horse. And you're like, I'm gonna get this other horse. Let's upgrade. Yeah. It's... Could you imagine? Like, <laughs> could you imagine we're both living in like 1850 and we're addicted to getting new horses every yeah. like three months? And we drink opium <laughs> and whiskey, <laughs> and like we don't even drink, we don't ever even seen fresh drinking water, and we just ride around a horse and fuck it. And, and we're, like, what's with you and the having sex with horses? It's, 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 it's the second time. I just you've, listen. You've brought it up. I just feel like I don't. I don't want to do that now. But I feel like if I lived in the 1800s. I might want to do it. Okay. Bestiality is wrong, and we do not condone that here, <laughs> despite what the CEO says. <laughs> the horse is too, Jesus Christ. So, like, the end of the world happens, and, like, you're coming over. Apocalypse is coming in, and you're, like, trying to check on me, see if I got – bring over supplies, and I'm just – there's a, I'm in the backyard fucking a horse. And I'm like, well, Nick, it's – same times now. It's over. I'm allowed to. It's like, why did you? Why? I shoot you. Just have to do it. I anything? shoot you both. Yeah. Just bang bang. Yeah. That might. That would be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is me, you, and the horse just yeah. dead in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah, man. If it, it, if the bombs are really dropping, I I probably would. Well, you gotta. You gotta shoot all your dogs in the head. I think. You got to put them down. Why? You don't want them to suffer. Maybe I do. Well, I don't want to murder my animals. I love that. <laughs> I'm just saying, if if the nukes are... Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe you just... Well, maybe they, would, it, maybe they would survive. Because they could eat, like, stuff on the ground. Well, and then maybe the, the, if it's a direct hit, that'd be better than having to kill... Shoot yeah, because then you all just get vaporized. Yeah, this is well. This... The worst part about if you had to kill your, because then the other one sees you, or you have to, it'd be a mess. But maybe okay, this is what I do. It'd be tough to fit them, but I try to fit all my bombs are dropping. I try to get all the animals in the Lamborghini Huracan Performante. That's never Viola any... Parsifé, which is purple with bronze HREs, ultra lightweight, gorgeous spec, forged carbon everywhere. Yeah. We all get in the Lamborghini, uh -huh. and we just go do some pools on 95 <laughs> while the bombs are dropped. You know what I mean? I think that would be – because, you know, like one time a few years ago, I was going – I was driving on New Year's mm -hmm. or you know, maybe 4th of July or New Year's, either one. I've done this a few different times. Same holiday. But, you know, in, in those holidays, too, at night, too, it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Everybody's drunk yeah. on drugs. Well, it's Florida. it's Florida. Everyone's like that every I'm day. I'm driving right? a fucking Lambo, 140, yeah. down 95. Oh, but yeah. the fireworks are going off, and the Lambo it's, – it's fun. It's a really fun. Experience. It's neat. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's very chaotic. It's like being in, like being in Iraq. Yeah, 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 yeah. in a Lambo. Yeah. So that's how I would probably, I, I, you know, we, me and my animals, we meet the end. Yeah, in the in the Huracan. Well, how many the cats? How many? So I have three dog, three pit bulls, and two cats. Okay, so you're gonna fit all of them in the two seater, in the two seater Performante. I think it would. I think it would work. Yeah, because the two bigger dogs, Dean is one on the. the Dean is one of the big dogs. Dean is like 110 pounds. <laughs> and then Samson is like, what, 60 probably? 70? 70, 80, yeah. And then Ruby's like 30, like Ruby's, 40 maybe. Ruby's pretty small. She's a lot smaller. And then, but she could be on the passenger footwell. Yeah. The two bigger dogs on the seat next to each other. And then, and the cat's just kind of jumping around all over the place. Just, yeah. On the yeah, Alcantara, yeah, yeah. just. Yeah. Like Holly would be up on the, on the dash probably, like on like. Like, you know, digging in her fucking... Destroying you know. the car. Yeah, and George would probably be in my lap or something. Yeah. Fine. He'd just look up at you and be like, it's all over, huh? Yeah, that's a good way to end it. I, I'd be fine with that. As you're doing polls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the second time we've had an extended And all talk. the animals are terrified, <laughs> of course. You're like, this guy doesn't know how to drive at but all. But, though, my pets are like... Because I used to take them up to Maryland and back. Like... All of them? Uh, yeah. You took all five? Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. I thought you just took the dogs. No, no, I took the cats too, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So they're used to being in vehicles. They're pretty good. They're pretty cool with it. So they actually might be fine. There's no way they're fun in that land. I it's think so they're... fucking loud. It's so loud. They go right to sleep. Could you imagine they're all <laughs> just knocked the fuck out? You're crying and terrified about the end of the world. The dogs are just... <sighs> 
Yeah, that's crazy though, dude. I could n- I could never bro five animals in the car for like twelve hundred miles or something. That's what car were you bringing them up in? What car did you bring them up in? The RS seven. Holy a shit. few times. Holy shit. Um, that's crazy. I think. I think the R7 was like the main car that I, did. you know, I had the A4, then R7. Yeah. And then, um, can't remember what the last time I went up was, but you got to put, I put blankets. I mean, cause my R7, my first one I had, had like the light, like light gray interior, Ooh, like almost white interior. That's icy. They so I have that. to put, I had to put blankets yeah. in the entire interior of the car. To, so they wouldn't destroy the yeah yeah okay it worked okay yeah worked all right interesting yeah that's that's crazy man I don't know how you because I hate driving like that dude I've I've had to drive from like Florida to New York and back like a bunch and it's it's just awful every time especially like going through like South Carolina which is like arguably the most depressing place on the planet because there's just nothing there but just like billboards about Jesus and like domestic abuse billboards, like call, if, yeah, you, if yeah, your yeah. husband's beating you, call this yeah, I number. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. Pff, Jesus fucking yeah. dude. There's one. I, there's one I saw like in Central Florida, where it's like it's a billboard. It was like your daughter is not your wife. <laughs> I, I've seen. <laughs> Have that, you yeah, seen yeah, that yeah. before? Yeah, I've seen the anti incest. Yeah, thing, yeah, it's like, dude, what the fuck is going on down here, man? <laughs> like, holy shit! Because in South Florida, you it's don't, God's country. In South Florida, you don't really get any of that. You know what I mean? You don't get any of the weird... Like, you get other weird shit. I do it. Oh, you're talking about the billboards, not the inside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't have quite the same... All the same issues. We have other issues down here. Yeah. Because, like... I don't think most people realize, like, South Florida... Like, Florida has so many different parts. Yeah. So, you got the panhandle... North. I want to start... I want to start drinking again and That's spend not. all my money on scratchers. Jeez. Could you imagine you <laughs> like go to the, the, the gas station start getting like five thousand dollars worth of scratch off tickets? <laughs> Could you imagine you fucking hit it big win like eighty million dollars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, who who's stupid now, Nick? As who's you, the idiot as now? You fall over drunk. <laughs> yeah. Because you've been drinking I'd hit my head on the table and die immediately. <laughs> and I just take the scratcher and I go ahead and get my <laughs> get my get my nice Genesis and GT4. Buy 18 vehicles. <laughs> To, to like keep at your mom's house. Yeah, that's it. I just have my eight cars and my my mom's like, can you fucking move one of them? I'm like, no, peasant. <laughs> I made it. I'm successful. I figured it out. <laughs> I stole my dead my dead friend's lottery ticket. Yeah, that that is crazy though. So let's do a little um, let's do a little Q and A segment. Hell yeah. So take my take my mobile device there. Okay. And maybe click on that. Oh, this, that third one. The second one? Right here. I don't think there's anything good on that. You can click on that. See if there's any good. Just look at the comments. See if there's anything interesting. Maybe find a comment question. You uh, can speak on a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> it's about the comments, dude. Uh, let's hear a bit a bit more about your time as a Marine. I know there were some rough times, but I would love to hear. Um, I love the Marine Corps. I love the CIA. I love Raytheon. Um, I love the federal government. Just answer the question. State, local <laughs> government. I, yeah, no, I mean, I, I had a good time out in the Marines. I was in there for four years. I was an optics tech. Um, It was good. I, well, I'll tell you a, a quick little story. Um, I was stationed in uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Maybe was in for a year and a half. And uh, I put posters up all over my wall, like motivational Marine Corps posters. Um, like real cringe shit. Like if you're a Marine and you have that shit up, it's super cringe and weird. You're like, you're really in the Marine Corps. Yeah. But I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. I liked I liked it. I unironic <laughs> I like I had all these posters all over my barracks room, ironically and unironically. Yeah. And then when I would get somebody new into the unit. Yeah. And 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 I'm just a private. I have no rank because I had already gotten like NJP that gotten in trouble yeah. for being a drunk. Yeah. Um, but I have a screaming eagle high height. Um 
a haircut so high, it's really out of rags, but it's super <laughs> motivational. Yeah. And hardcore. So they like, you get away with it. Mm -hmm. But I would like, one time we got like a new guy and his name was like, we were calling him Cheese. Cheese. Because his name wasn't, but it was like, I don't know, it sounded like Cheese. Okay. But he had like, he's like a kind of a nerdy guy and like and glasses and, and, uh, I, I grabbed him and I put him in the, locked him in my closet. Okay. And I was screaming at him. I was telling, you know, just being like, this is a, this is a Marine Corps. This is welcoming him. You we're going to rape you. Service. We're going to, yeah. Yeah. He was a good man. He was a good kid. He, it was, it was all a goof. He shot him. He shot himself several, several hours later. He was in for a week and a half. <laughs> but see, I would him. And then I had another roommate. Um, there was a few girls I brought over to my barracks room, like, and would have sex with while they were like asleep. Yeah. Many of uh, them on multiple occasions. Yeah. Um, and they, I'm sure they woke up in the middle of it while I'm just going to town. Yeah. On, um, I would be so pissed if I was that roommate. If I was your, if I was your bunkmate, I'd be like this fucking guy. Dude. I thought it, I thought it was like kind of hot, you know? Yeah. I'm sure one, <laughs> I'm sure one of them was like, this is so fucking hot. And the, the other guy was probably like, bro, I gotta be up at three 30 in the morning. Why the fuck is he doing this? But in my defense, the, the two or three different girls that I brought in my barracks room and did that while my roommates were asleep, both hot. Okay. At least eight out of 10, eight nines out of 10. Okay. Um, great hygiene. No, it's just smell issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, cause it's like, you know, like beds here and then their beds are like, right. There. It's a tiny little box room. It's yeah. not like there's any, <laughs> I'm just like, like, you know, girlfriend, butt naked, just ride my cock. I'm just slamming it. Slam pig in my girlfriend. 45 minutes. Sweating. Dude, 45 fucking yeah. minutes, yeah. dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Jizzing on her face. You know what I mean? Like just, Jeez. I'm getting bricked up thinking about it. <laughs> so in my face, at least they were, you know, it was a good show, you know? Yeah. They probably look back on those times now with fond, fond memories. Yeah. I like how. So that's a little bit about the Marine Corps. Unfortunately, they kicked me out. I don't know why. I was an exemplary service member. I loved it. I would I was, like to go back. I was a real patriot. So, I would say. Um, if the, anybody from the DOJ is watching this, um, please hit me up, um, <laughs> and we can work something out. I'd love to work for the the federal government once again. Oh God! <laughs> any any kind of role. <laughs> oh, let's see. Click on the that next video because I think. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm the one I was in the wraith. I just made. Oh yeah, I'm looking at it. Let's see. Man, these are these are some fucking comments, King. How to get over stage fright? I guess when you're, how did you, when you were, you know, getting into the industry? You got you drunk. Haven't you been doing porn clean for like the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta get drunk. I, I, well, I, I think he might be talking more about uh, personal life. You know, what I mean, like not necessarily. He could be, yeah, yeah. So I mean, like the, you know, booze. I used to, you know, drink a little bit. But um, that's not necessarily the best thing to always do. But really, it's like experience, you know? The more you're, like, around chicks and then, like, you have awkward stuff. You don't know. I mean, my first time getting laid when I was 18, it was horrendous. It was embarrassing. Yeah. I lasted, like, maybe a minute and a half. I, you know, I apologized for, like, fucking a minute after. Yeah. I was like, I'm so sorry. I really, I thought. I thought this was going to be different. Is it different? You know, it yeah. was a, in a motel room in Ocean City, Maryland on spring break. Oh, with the redhead chick? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice lady. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just experience. You got to, like, fail, you know? Yeah. So you hear, like, the, you know, like, Gary V or the other, like, fake yeah. grind set yeah, like entrepreneur other, people. The they're like, you have to make eight businesses fail 20 times. Get up 21. Yeah, that's good. Go on, run on the beach at four in the morning. Right. And, like, you got to, like, the more just you just fuck up and then just try to get out there and experience like you'll you'll get more comfortable around women and stuff yeah no and, and that's the, that's the problem is like a lot right. of people a lot of people with anything in life they they fantasize they think about what they're going to do when they get to a certain point they get in a certain kind of shape they get their life together in a certain kind of way and then then i'll start the business then i'll talk to women then yeah. I'll, which a little bit of that's fine you know if you're like morbidly obese and haven't left your house in months. Maybe start getting a little bit of shape before you really get out there and start doing cold approaches to women. No, you got to do it when you're you got to do it when you're 400 pounds in the in the, in the Walmart scooter. Yeah, because yeah. if you if, you, if have, you can do that, then you're good. yeah. Because yeah. if you have the confidence when yeah. you're 
when you're a disgusting person to do that. Yeah. And walk up to hot women and be like, hey, me and you, Arby's, what do you think? Yeah. Like, then when you get it, when you get in better shape and yeah. you are more attractive, you're you're fucking set. Yeah, I mean, but that's with anything. It's just like, it's not that you, how to do it, not be afraid or not be, uh, you know, feel awkward. It's like, you're going, that's part of it. It's like courage is not not being afraid. It's being terrified and doing it anyway. Yeah. Talking, you know, it's courage is, is being 350 pounds and having not showered in a week and approaching that nine out of 10 Latina at the Publix deli counter and hitting on her. Yeah. Telling her that you have her bricked up. That you're bricked up and that you want to... No, no, no. Tell her you have her bricked up. You have her... (laughs) She's a little bit. You have her bricked up. Let's me and and us come. Go fuck. Yeah. Let's sex. And she starts crying because she's scared. Yeah, and she calls... She maces you. But that's a learning experience. You will grow from that. (laughs) Really, if you if you want to just get over stage fright in any situation, take a sales job. Take a sales job where yeah, you're for where you're for because that's what it fi- that's what, even the thing about sales shit it's terrifying. Yeah, see for me, <laughs> I, I get excited. I'm like, ooh, because I did it and I was like, I had terrible like you know stage fright. And, and see if you're if you're good at sales, you can grift your way into anything. Oh, whatever. That's you how want. you did this. Yeah, you're 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 a grifting I'm, salesperson. Yeah, that's it. I said <laughs> I said to sell my my basic bare level of confidence. Yeah, and I hired you. Bought you an AMG. Yep. And now I'm working here. That's how it's done, people. No, you, but that's how Gary Vee has done everything. Yeah. Like Gary Vee, he's, he's dropped some legit booger person quotes. He's like, would I rather have $100 million or zero? He's like, zero. Because I'd be <laughs> hungry to make that 100 mil. That's right. He's like, would I rather lose my arm right now and go back to being 25? I give up my arm to be 25 again because I got so many ideas. But see, that's the thing. It's like, I'm, a, I'm such a bug person still kind of that like I hear that and I'm like, yeah. I agree. I like that. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take the hundred million dollars, yeah, please. But then also I know like, no, the hundred million, that's the better. But <laughs> I'd love to see Gary. Because I like, do you know, because I that's cause I, you know, because I started from the dirt with nothing kind of. But at the same time, it's like I did with this business and everything. I had barely any money. I did all on my own, but like I wasn't ra- like my parents were like upper middle cl- class. Yeah. Like they're both working people. Yeah, that spent most of their money when they got it. Of course, and, you know had a house that was. They're too- good Americans. But I got I was raised like upper middle class. Like I had a good upbringing with both parents. You really did, yeah. Yeah, your parents were. Super- my parents were still together. Yeah, they're super good. Really people. good people. I love. They them. both made like you know eighty k, hundred k a year. I wish they were my parents. Yeah, I would do. Anything. Most people would. I want to be a member of the Adams. Your parents family. are terrible. Yeah, I want to be a member of the Adams family. No, my mom. But, my mom's like, good. My mom's pretty. He's cool. a nice lady. Yeah. She just gets angry. She hits me. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I mean, like just having being like raised in like a pretty, you know, decent off kind of situation. Yeah. That's a huge advantage. Cause I like learned basic things about human decency and. Yeah. And um, how to not shit in the street and how to, you know, I, I, and I end up doing a lot of things my parents taught me not to do. Yeah. But I had that basis of. Yeah. Some good. And like, that's things like if you start with nothing and you're living in complete poverty and it, like the chances are so much like worse that oh yeah you're gonna ever escape any of that cycle of insanity. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, that's a hundred percent true. I think it's definitely like one of those things where, you know, if it was me, because my family was like middle class, upper middle class, whatever, and like, if it was me and I had like no money, my family was super poor, like living in some like crappy apartment or whatever. And I turn 18 and I'm not, I'm not like smart enough to get a scholarship or like good at sports or whatever. I'm immediately joining the military because that's like America's version of socialism is like, and I know a lot of people on the internet are like, well, you shouldn't have to sign your whole life and sacrifice your limbs to, to, to get, you know, education. It's like, why not? It, Something for nothing. Well, it's but good. It, but it's, it's like, but it's like most of the time, bro, you just get. You just get stationed at some base in like Texas or North Carolina. You become an alcoholic. Yeah, or Georgia. <laughs> and then you get to go to school for free. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I went to school with guys who were in Iraq and Afghanistan. And like they were like truck drivers or mechanics or, you know, on murder squads or whatever. And they were good people. Murdering innocent villagers. Yeah. And they were good people on hey, fire. They, hey, they were trying to bring them freedom. Okay. That's right. I won't hear any of this this commie this commie anti American rhetoric on this podcast on the Alex. Adams I love show. the war machine. <laughs> I love the military industrial complex. Jesus Christ! <laughs> but it's like, but they you know they were cool guys and they were just like 
hey man, I didn't really have any other options. It's like this yeah. was it. And guess what, bro? They were going to te- they were going to tech school because that's where I went, and they were making good money because they're getting paid to go to school. They're doing some other job that their military experience kind of got them. And it's like they were all chill dudes, and I really liked them. You know, we had this one professor who was – he was uh, – I think he was a Jamaican dude. He, he, was a, he was a nice guy. He was, a, he, was, he was nice. He was an okay teacher. But he, like, he would go around and ask these guys and be like – because he knew they were in the military, and he'd be like, hey, how many people you killed over there? Hey, how many? He's like, hey, what's the most fucked up thing you've seen? You ever seen any dead kids? <laughs> and, I, and like, and I went to him and I was like, hey, man, you, you can't ask these. You're, one of them is going to snap and go full metal jacket on all of us. And it's going to be the end of it. Because he would like do that. Yeah, and yeah. these guys, and the guys are like, well, see, some people that have never been, hey, man, they, they try to like LARP as like, you know, like, oh, I, I was going to join. But yeah. then my liver, yeah. my liver broke. <laughs> and then my leg, my leg was no good. <laughs> I went to the recruiter. Yeah, but then my toe, I had an ingrown toe. Didn't you run a marathon was... last week, Jim? Weren't you running a five k? Yeah, but I couldn't get in the seals. Oh, uh, because no. if I was going to do it, I was going to. You got to go all the way. You know how to, you know, Hell Week buds. You know, demo- underwater demolitions. You know what I mean? That's how it is. And it's like when I joined, bro. I had two DUIs. One of the DUIs was in Nebraska. Yeah, and my recruiter told me to lie about it, and I did. <laughs> good and they didn't find out about it it was so cool <laughs> but like i should i was overweight the u.s guy i had two dui like i should not have been you able were to the get perfect in. american yeah. soldier you i were, was a drug addict you were like ready, you were ready to go to war yeah like <laughs> you were ready to serve your country but i figured it out yeah you gotta like figure it out you know yeah but i but that's the thing to me the best way to join is like you gotta be you gotta be like desperate yeah you gotta be like and like i had came from good parents and a good family that they paid for my college at first but I did nothing with it and failed out immediately yeah. and then just stayed home and, and drank Everclear and did sleeping pills. And would, <laughs> I'd rent movies from the public library and watch like real artsy, like weird, like A24 type yeah. movies, which I wouldn't remember anything of. Because like most of those movies, nothing happens in them anyway. It's like fucking two like, you know, really thin people. There's some guy with a beard and some like hot chick with like hot brunette with big tits. It's like they're staring off into a window. <laughs> And then they flip their car over and it's, but I'm just drinking grain alcohol, eating Benadryl, hallucinating while I'm supposed to be in my co- intro to computer class. I'm thinking based. Yeah, I'm <laughs> thinking it was good living. I'm not going to lie. Dangerously, dangerously so based. So after like a couple of years of doing that, I was like, well, the Marine Corps looks good. It looks like a good option, you know, because <laughs> oh, that's what you got to be. So when I got in, it was like, I, you know, I had some jobs at Walmart and Radio Shack and other, you know, warehouse you know yeah the you know yeah, you got some good so, stories yeah to me like the Marine Corps, i was like this is cool you know but yeah, i had like very few options left because my parents were very very much done with me and my antics my yeah. shenanigans <laughs> which i call being based and red pill <laughs> <laughs> fucking red pill <laughs> watching movies alone drunk on benadryl in your fucking back in your parents back room yeah yeah Cause that, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, man. It's like, I wouldn't, I would be terrible in the military. I don't think I'd be good at it at all. Like I would have to be really desperate. Yeah. Like I would not be like, yeah, I don't, there are a lot of people, guys who are like, oh, I could do that. It's like, I've heard stories about boot camp. I would be terrible. But see, I wouldn't have ever thought that I was, I never thought about the military when I was younger. Yeah. Cause I was like a nerdy kind of, kind of shy, uh, not want, didn't really want to do much of anything. Yeah. No real ambition. <laughs> Perfect. I wanted to, to Eat food and ice cream and God, like you were made to be a government employee. <laughs> Holy fuck. Yeah, I didn't shit. realize that I really was the <laughs> best oh, person to join the No, you're the optimal government employee. <laughs> yeah. Do the minimum and eat a bunch of food. Yeah. And, yeah. and don't do anything else. <laughs> it's so perfect. Maybe read a book, watch a little TV. <laughs> this is me at like 14 years old. <laughs> Clicking through the channels. 15 years old. But then once my life had gotten bad enough through my own actions over the course of years and years, repeatedly sabotaging my life yeah then it was like oh man this military i could maybe try that let's give it a shot you know and immediately you got these big jacked guys roided out screaming at you just saying autistic wild shit i was like this is where i belong i love this <laughs> yeah so it's like guys if you hear people say oh you know boot camp military is not good for you if you're anywhere near mentally ill enough like i am and you've been through some shit I think you'll like it. <laughs> and when you're in boot camp a few months from now and you think back on this 
and you're cursing me and you think what a piece of shit I <laughs> yeah, am for you're telling fucking you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. And then you have to remember that you took life advice from a porn star on YouTube. Yeah. So you can't be too mad the at us. The guy who makes incest porn. Yeah. You can't be too you can't be too mad at uh at us. <laughs> because you truly really know. Yeah. You gotta the be true path to freedom is internalizing, accepting that everything bad in your life is your own doing, is your yeah. own fault. No matter what it is. And if it's things where it's like literally someone came and beat you with a brick for no reason in the head and you're half retarded now, yeah. it's your fault. Because <laughs> you didn't have to be standing there. Yeah. Maybe well, you were wearing a red shirt and that guy got if you were in a blue shirt or green shirt, maybe he wouldn't have hit you in the head with a brick. Yeah. And you had no way to know that, sure. Well, because you were wearing a red shirt in Crips, ter- in Crips territory. It's your fault. Like in a Crips neighborhood, and they were upset about that. <laughs> yeah. That's but the, the more that the more that you can just accept responsibility for everything, even things that are completely out of your control, it just, I don't know, it feels good. I like it. It makes your life easier. <laughs> <laughs> I think it makes you less mad at other people. Yeah. Which is probably yeah. better. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but it's like, for sure, you can't change everything. But there's a lot of things you, you know, yeah, a lot of things you can change. Yeah, I was gonna say some, but I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was like processing in my head. I'm like, should I? And I'm like, nah. We're, well, just this is a very motivational episode. Yeah, it's turned to really it's taking a turn to really, yeah, really good. We talked about the apocalypse again for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to be a theme every week. We're just like, when are the bombs coming? I said I'd have to shoot my dogs in the head. Yeah, you did say that. You also said you'd have sex with a horse before they <laughs> ended it all. You said a lot of things. Listen, this is a, I'm not going to do any of those things. This is a fictional podcast. <laughs> We're not real. We're in the fiction. We have fake bodies. Do you see the TikToks where the chicks will be like twerking? They'll say fake body. No. And it's, I think that's something where it's like. What does it mean? Like BBL or something? No, like that it's. <laughs> They're not a real person or something because, like, the algorithm they think that oh, like they're AI or like a deep fake or something, yeah. Because it's like if it was a real girl, even though it is, but it, 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 it's an autistic TikTok thing, yeah. It sounds sick. I hate TikTok so fucking much. It's a terrible, Just gonna, we're fake bodies, we're fake bodies, fake bodies. Hey, we're a hey, we're in the comedy fiction section on rss.com. All right, this is comedy fiction, okay. I thought it was self help. I well, you can only choose two, so I chose improv and and fiction comedy okay because we'll actually get recommended for those things so someone looks for like a self-improvement podcast they'll get this yeah and i don't know if that's gonna it's not gonna help you know what i mean so i was like well let's just i mean we're not comedians but man most comedians are so such so terrible that maybe i think some people might think we're funny i hope or they're gonna be like man these two guys fucking suck dude i i mean i i want to make money for doing nothing so bad i know man I have such a strong desire. Hey, it's crazy. <laughs> Deep in my heart. <laughs> See, I feel like I'm made for that. Yeah. I feel like, I'm made I feel, to, yeah, I feel like, like we've I'm, been put on this earth <laughs> to do so little and make so much money. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you and every anti-work user yes. on Reddit. Bill Man, we got to get into to Reddit stuff. Yeah. Not this episode because I think we're at the end, I think. Yeah, we're at like an hour and 20 in. Okay, I think, yeah. So, but this was a good one. Yeah. We, got, we covered some really important topics. Yeah. You know, maybe the next one we'll cover uh, the Genesis experience. We'll if we, cover ourselves in cum. That we'll do that too. <laughs> Just show up covered in, in semen, semen acts. Probably have a yeah. Probably have a. We'll probably have another update very soon. Again, let you guys know about the Genesis situation. The Genesis experience, and we could talk about uh, going on the unemployable podcast. That was fun. We had a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. goofing around with those those yeah. fine gentlemen. And then uh, you want? Do you have any plugs? You want to plug anything? Uh, Sig Sour. <laughs> Great company. They do. They do good work. <laughs> really like uh, like everything that they make. Good products. They're getting sued by like a bunch of cops because their gun just randomly went off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like what's the what's the what's the, like H and K like the guy? I've heard like BMW enthusiasts like uh, really no oh, Heckler and Cock. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I even knew because I'm not like a real gun guy. I just have a few guns. Like yeah. got some Glocks. We're and doing shit. it again. We're talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. But H- I, I saw like some like meme on TikTok, and then it was just like, oh, it was a BMW because it was like somebody in X five M was shooting someone with their. That's right. With a, you know, what I mean, they were like, well, oh, it's probably a H and K. He's a BMW owner. He's got, you know. I didn't know that was a thing, but I guess it is. Yeah, I think H and H and K is just they're just super expensive because they're like more like higher end, I guess, boutique stuff. Maybe I don't really know a lot about guns. Like I know the basics. Do you think Balenciaga would sponsor a podcast? 
They're hard up now. Yeah, maybe. Nobody wants to be associated with Balenciaga. Maybe if we maybe if we tie we tie you up in some bondage gear. <laughs> or me. Maybe if we both are in bondage gear. You see Nelk did a, a video about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he's he's like, to... hey, can I get a job? He's, he's <laughs> like, I, I love kids. There's some shit. He said some shit like that. And I thought that was, I thought that was funny. Yeah, salute to the Nelk, Nelk boys. Yeah, they're doing good. They're good content. They're doing good work. Years, they're, yeah, they're doing good work. Nice Canadian. I don't want to have enough money to buy a boat. Yeah. One day. I know. Me too. I want to. I be, could buy a boat. See, the thing is, man, I could buy. I could buy. I could buy like a yacht now. Yeah. yeah. But to me, it's like if I'm gonna do it, man, it's like I can't have like some fifty foot piece of shit. I want a hundred. I want a real. Yeah. Yacht. I want a yacht to where it's like where I'm docked at. Yeah. Only like five or six guys have yachts their, are better than me. Yeah. Not almost all of them. The all of them will be <laughs> if you get a fifty foot boat. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, at least a hundred foot. Because it's, I mean, bro, you got to make like real, real money to have something like that. Yeah. Because it's, like, it's, I have no desire really to be on a boat, to have one at all. Aside from just being like, I have a boat. Casually mentioning at NA meetings the that, yacht. You, that you now have a yacht. Yeah. That's good. But see, what's great too is like when I share meetings and stuff, it's like I never even say that shit anyway. Cause it's like in meetings, cause it's like, it's so cringe to fuck. Cause there's just so many yeah. people in meetings where it's like, they'll be like, you know, I own a bit. Like I was at a meeting the other night and the guy was, there was like four different people that were just like, you know, I, you know, I own a business and, uh, you know, we were struggling, but now things are really good. And like, or there's this one guy that like, he'll, he'll fucking, he's a nice guy, but it's like, he, he just got in on some kind of phone room, phone room scam business thing. Yeah. And over the past couple of months. And he'll, every time he shares, he's talking about how he's a business owner now. Yeah. And so it's just me in the corner, like vaping, looking at GT threes on Auto Trader. Yeah, not saying a goddamn thing. <laughs> or if I do share, I'm like, you know, God is good. Uh, I'm just grateful I'm not dead. Um, yeah, but to be brief, I, 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 I'm stressed out about stuff, and uh, I shouldn't be, because um, I'm just I'm just grateful to be here. Thanks for letting me share. Like that's the kind of, because <laughs> I can't. Because the thing, if I share like that real shit, dude, it's just like people hit me with rocks. They throw rocks at me. Yeah. They start screaming. Yeah. <laughs> they start. They shit and piss themselves. Am I talking about how my fucking the transmission in my Lambo's fucked up? And then like, I, like <laughs> must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> some people would love it though. Oh, some yeah. people would. Love oh yeah. It. If I I know some people are probably mad at me. A lot I of people, don't share that shit. Yeah. In meetings. A lot of people would be like, what a pig. Yeah. Just like me. Yeah. My Corolla transmission is broken. Yeah. We're going through the same shit, me and him. Crazy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Cause that's the thing is like, as, as like an American, you've been programmed to like, be like when you own a business to never shut the fuck up about it. Yeah. yeah to yeah, literally yeah. just be like, I own a bit like you're at the, you're, you're, you're fucking at the urinal at the Miami Improv in the cl- in the weird club they make you go to piss in, and you're looking over and you're like, "Hey man, I own a business." And this guy's like just on Molly. His eyes are as fucking wide as the sun, and he and he's just tongue hanging out of his mouth. And you're like, yeah. "Be nice, <laughs> my, be- <laughs> <laughs> my be not have business." That's the thing. Most people's businesses, man, it's, uh, it's nightmare shit. Yeah, it's awful. It's horrific. Can't, but can't even imagine. You don't really make that much money, and you have to work constantly. But you get to lord over people. Yeah, you maybe have a few minions oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, you get yeah. to control. Yeah, that's what people that's, like. People like that, bro. See, my business. I think the only real way to have a business aside from this, this is the best business. Yeah. You can make millions of dollars doing this stupid shit. You 100 percent sure. You have the biggest brain. Get a handy cam. Get your cock out. But yeah, otherwise, it's like if I get to fuck hot 19 year old, uh, jizz everywhere. Yep. And own Lamborghini, McLaren, Rolls Royce. Yeah. And really not do anything, not have any employees or anything, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's, I like that business. Yeah. That's fine. That's a fun business. Most other businesses, or probably another good business is uh, being a fake, you know, stock trader, money person. Yes. If you can start your own also hedge fund. great business. Or crypto thing. And oh, just, yeah. Scam people. And be a gambling addict and, like, be good at it. Yeah. Also great business. Imagine just, like, Every other business model, nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Imagine just living at the Bellagio and just playing, like, blackjack for a living. That'd be And great. making, like. 500k a year million a year that'd be good and your everything is comped but they're trying to kick you out of the casino because you're taking all their fucking money and you just don't do anything you just drink get room service that's good and sit in the and smoke menthols well i'm gonna do that when i start drinking again <laughs> next week lose all and your, lose all your... with just scratchers <laughs> <laughs> way worse way yeah. less fun you just sit there scratching for hours bro Dude, they did that. At people the, do that. Uh, that's how people do that on TikTok Live. Yeah, ch- chicks that like those. Bro, the, John and Seth did it on Facebook Live. They bought like on the sh- on the the shop's channel. 
they went live and they're just doing scratchers for like 20, 30 minutes, just banging them out. And they want, I think they like, he lost 40 bucks. He bought like $300 worth of scratchers, like a big stack. And I think he made like 280 back or 260 back or some shit. It, they lost like 40 bucks and they were just like worth it, bro. I'm like, I don't know if that was worth it. I didn't, I mean, I scratched a few of them. I, you just, I, I feel this. I did like one time I bought like a scratch off when I was like 18. Yeah. And you won several million I won, dollars. Yeah. And that's how we got, <laughs> that's how we got everything here. Yeah. I won twenty dollars. Yeah. I immediately went back in, bought like two more scratch offs, or like with the twenty I got. Yeah. And I won like five dollars. And I was like, oh, I can't gamble ever again. <laughs> so I pretty much never ever gambled. I, I came out ahead, and that's it. I'm... No, no, no. I lost money. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I won went... the twenty dollars, and I spent it all. Okay, I guess I did come out. You came out a little bit ahead. Came out ahead. Yeah. You're like, eh? yeah. But then I just immediately saw like this isn't smart. Yeah. This whole thing. Yeah. And I really liked it. <laughs> I so really... I was like, let me just go back to alcohol and drugs. <laughs> Where I'm like, I know, safer, that game. Yeah. I know that game. <laughs> Much safer addiction. Yeah, bro. Because even just scraping them off, I felt gross. Like you just was scratching. Yeah. You, just, you feel like a fat. You're supposed to. You're supposed to have like scratcher. Yeah, you just feel like a car. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you feel like someone next you, to the Taco Bell and like yeah, cans you, of. Monster. You feel like someone you see on Hoarders, the TV show, yeah. and you're just like, and they're just like, ah, and they're like, I hope I win. I hope I win this week. Let me see. Ah, fuck. Now the loser throws it like in the back of their car. Do you think your brother's going to be mad at our posture again? I hope not. <laughs> I, I hope not, dude. I hope he likes the podcast. I can't help but slouch. He I'm a... criticize, his, his brother criticized us about the, the last first podcast. Yeah, he was not happy with our posture. Yeah. But it's okay. Which we know it's not perfect. And we already went too long. I was going to go, I was going to have this one be short, but. Yeah, we're Listen, at the... You got two um, of the world's preeminent artistic, creative, yeah. comedic, uh, Autists. Aut- aut- autistic genius people here. Yeah. You can't put us in a box like that. No. You can't, you can't put, tell us how long You can't put a clock on this nightmare. You know? You don't know when you're going to wake up. <laughs> wake up. Wake up. <laughs> All right. It's well, time guys. for me to play Dark Souls 3 and uh, get some Chipotle probably. Hell yeah. Well, guys, thank you for, if you made it to the end of the this nightmare, thank you for checking out. Your ep- true, true patriot. Yeah, you're Gentleman a true, and scholar. We love you. We actually we actually like you if you watch it. We're if not you're like, a female watching this, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Mistakes were made. Uh, I, I love you, though, all the ladies out there. We love we love everyone. Yeah. We love everyone except ourselves. Maybe next episode I'll talk a little bit more about the, um, how to deal with women. <laughs> how, I mean, how to, how to, how to attract women. And how, to... <laughs> how to deal with and attract women. I'll give some like dating Bro, advice. Bro, it sounds like you're like, you're, you work at Bass Pro Shops. What must be done about the women? <laughs> They hate it when you say female. Yeah. That's a new thing. Like I've, they never, hate that. I've never said that before in my whole life. I've ever. only started saying it sometimes because you know, I've it, seen videos on TikTok about women. Freak, like, people freak out yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. Do not like it. I've never, I've always just called them like girls or chicks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never even said women really. Like, because eventually that'll be a bad thing to say. They'll be like, did you just call me a woman? You didn't address me as goddess or princess yeah. or your majesty. And I'll be like, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Princess. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Highness. Yeah, Your Highness, or what? Yeah, and I'll just be like, I don't, I don't, dude, call yourself whatever you You'll want. immediately get executed. God, that'd be so nice. In the street. Yeah, and they just pull me out of the Genesis and yeah. right in the fucking road and just, just bag dump. But all right, guys, thank you for checking out episode two of the Alex Adams show. Hopefully, we'll do this again. Yes. And, uh, because you can't stop us. Because you can't, you can try. I mean, you probably can't stop us. <laughs> dude, we need, we, <laughs> <laughs> dude we need some you know how like on john's thing on the unemployable they have like yeah, cam yeah, says the yeah, yeah i think yeah. we need to be i got one it would be like come more player we end it you know what i mean maybe we do something like that but anyway guys thank you for for checking us checking out the podcast if you stay your own come do that do that <laughs> just do it bye bye if you stayed until the end thank you for watching and uh we'll, we'll see you guys uh hopefully soon cheers cheers my friend <laughs> cheers my friends <laughs>